Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this new video. This time we are going to be talking about Netstat, which is an amazing tool that you can find on Windows and Linux as well. But in this case, we're going to be using the tool from a Windows machine. And basically, Netstat is short for Network Statistics, as you can imagine. And it is a command tool used to display network connections, routing tables, network interface statistics, and even sessions activity. As you could see here, the menu, the help menu is super simple. If you do a net step forward slash question mark, you're going to get all the options. And, you know, it's very basic. You have minus A that's going to display all connections and by all. It means all TCP and UDP connections because that's what's going to be showing the transport protocols activity. Uh, and sometimes that may be overwhelming. You may not need that. So when that happens, you have the option of specifying the specific protocol that you would like to see if you use minus P. And then you have to specify whether you want to use TCP or UDP and the uh, version 6 of each protocol if you want. You can also display the executable for that, which is a super useful thing when you are troubleshooting uh, network connections or if you're performing malware analysis. That's one of the um, switches or tools that you can use for that. And then you have minus E to display Ethernet statistics and you get the concept. So let's uh, go right into it. Uh, by using, uh, let me come in here and let, let's go through a couple of examples. So I'm going to do netstat minus um, A, as I said before, and A is to display all connections and listening ports, right? So I'm going to hit enter and that's going to do its magic. Now, if you're following this, you know that this is going to take forever when you do the all connections. As you could see, it's listing all the connections, including the internal connections and processes happening, happening on the computer. That's why you see the local address of 000 on port 135, 445, which is um, uh, SMB. And then you see the foreign addresses on port uh, 0, but this is the same computer. So these are internal connections that are listening on the computer on these specific ports, and that's why you see it. And then you have uh, the other uh, connections, which is the loopback IP addresses connecting to itself, and these are for internal processes that are working on that. That's why I prefer to use the specific protocol that I'm looking for, right? Instead of going through all this, because I stopped this, if I hadn't stopped this, that was going to go into the UDP. The other things that you have to pay attention to and make sure that, or, or I'm sure that you guys know this, but notice that this is going to list the internal IP address plus the port. And in this case, it is the internal port. And then it's going to display the connection to the remote computer on that port that is connected to. Let me use another example right here because that one didn't work. For instance, this connection, as you could see, I'm connected to 52.112.95.83 on port HTTPS, but I don't know what specifically that port is, right? Like it could, could be 443 or it could be anything else over uh, that, that has HTTPS enabled. So that's something that you have to pay attention to. Now, this is not going to tell you the whole story. For instance, let me uh, scroll down a little bit more. And let me see if I find one of my other connections. So if I come down here, if I do, let me do this again, right? The other thing that you're going to notice is that if you don't specify the N, which is to show everything in a numerical value, the system is going to try to resolve the remote, uh, the foreign address as well as the foreign as the foreign uh, port number. As you could see right here, I'm using netstat minus N minus P TCP, and N stands for do not resolve anything, just show the numbers, and that's going to show me just this right here instead of going through the uh, the uh, um, 
port's uh, names instead of the numbers. I mean, to me, this is easier. Like if I do this, let me come right here again. If I do this, notice this, that's gonna show me all the connection. Whereas if I remove the end to show the port, it's gonna take longer, right? So because it's trying to resolve the foreign addresses and the foreign, and the foreign ports to its name, which is uh, time consuming. So I'm gonna do this. And when we do this, let's go through this one more time and let's find one of my remote sessions in here. Okay, so as you could see, I have a remote connection to uh, RDP uh, on port 3389 on a remote computer. Now, I know that that doesn't say 3389, it says 3398, and that's because on the remote computer, let me bring this here. So I have, uh, this is my computer right here, and this is a computer running RDP. On this computer, uh, I configure RDP to run on a port that is not the standard port. The standard port is 3389, but I'm running this, running this on 3398. So when I connect from this computer to this computer, I'm connected to port 3398, and that's what we are seeing uh, right here. Where is it? 3398. Now, if you didn't know that, you may say, you know, what is that port? If you Google that, that you're going to get something else or something weird. But what you could do with NestApp is also looking into either the process ID, and then you can trace that down in Task Manager or any other utility, or you can also see the executable that is uh, actively using these sessions right here, and that's what we're gonna do now. So to see the executables, let me uh, come here, and let's do a, uh, let's go to the Help menu, and to see the executable, you see that you, we have to use minus B for that. So let me come here and I'm going to use minus B. I believe for this I need elevated privileges for that to offload the executable name. Let's see what happens. And that's exactly right. So let me open up a new terminal with admin privileges. So I'm bringing my new terminal here and I'm going to do net stat minus. Uh, what is it that I have? I use minus N, so it doesn't resolve uh, any names, and then I'm going to use minus B to see the executables that are taking place, and I only want to see the connections that are working on TCP. I don't care about anything else. So let me come here, and I get an error message saying display protocols, PTCP, and if I come to the uh, help menu, let's see if I missed anything here. Okay, so uh, looking at the help menu, I realized that there's nothing wrong with my syntax except that I mistyped something. Instead of TCP, I put TCP. Transmission control protocol, I type TPC, transmission protocol control. So once you do that, you are going to notice that this time is going to show you, uh, let me bring up the... Uh, the syntax, so it's going to show you uh, the connections in numerical value and it's going to show you the executable and that's what minus B is going to do. And in this case, it's going to be only on TCP sessions. So if I go through this, let me go up, you are going to notice the internal connections and the executables that are working on that internal connections. But if I scroll down to my remote desktop services, which is this one right here, you'll see that it's going to list MSTSCEXE as the executable that is um, working on this established connection. And then by looking into it, you can assume, safely assume, that the system, or in this case, this connection is using remote desktop services or RDP. Another way you could do that is by displaying the process ID number and let's go back into the help menu to find that option. So if we come right here, display Ethernet, the place for, for qualified domain. 
and here it is it is minus o displays the own in process id associated with this connection so let's give that a try let me come here and i'm gonna use minus o that zero is o and that's gonna display the process id right in this column now with this process id you could use other tools such as task manager to identify the process and the executable that is associated to that process that is having that specific session. So let's, uh, for instance, find my remote desktop services session one more time. I am on 3398. Where is it? 192, 168. So here it is, 192, 168. Uh, as you could see, this is my uh, local port. It's connected to that remote port. This is the IP address that is established, and this is the process ID. Now, I can use that process ID and bring over, and this is, again, one more time. This is... 27652. I can bring task manager and I'm gonna search by process ID 27652. 2727. 27, no, this is 2000. I have to go up. 27652. 